Hey, yeah, all right, guys. Wow, great. Okay. Wow, great. Call a crackhead. Violent crime. Well, guys, before we get started on today... Well, guys, before we get started on today's crap, um, I just wanted your help, okay? If somebody can please help me out with this one. I am having trouble doing the show. Violent crime. I got this Taco Bell ad, okay, today, and it's making me feel like I think I might have dementia. Sometimes we go too far. Uh-huh. I have, and that's why Taco Bell has hired me to make an apology for them. Go ahead, say sorry. Huh? Taco Bell one. Okay. So Pete Davidson, he comes into Taco Bell. He's like, I go too far sometimes. So Taco Bell hired me to say sorry to make an apology ad. Hey, lady, apologize. Go ahead. Say sorry. I don't get it. Uh -huh. What you need in the morning is tasty, simple food. Okay. Buffy eggs, buffy cheese, sausage, hash browns, maybe wrap. Oh, That's a mm. breakfast crunch wrap. Well, they should open a restaurant that only serves those breakfast crunch things. You riffing, or is this part of the commercial? I don't know. I didn't read the script. <laughs> I think Taco Bell's going a little too fancy with it, okay? A little too complicated, okay? They should do an ad campaign, okay? This is Donnie Draper stuff right here. They do an ad campaign called Profiles and... They do an ad campaign called Profiles and drive Through, And it's real people... Going through the drive-thru at Taco Bell. Cause 4 a.m. everything else is closed. I don't want to get out of my car and I had, a few, I had a few drinks. Then somebody else pulls up, they're like, I want to have diarrhea at work. That's why I did driving through here for this breakfast. Nothing else is open. Nothing else is open. So if anybody can explain it to me, please, this ad. All right, I get it. They're revamping their breakfast menu. Okay, I get that part. All the, uh, but, but is there a joke here? Okay, great, guys. Well, today we're going to be looking at a guy who we can always count on to say something odd and hilarious. That's right. We're talking about Chuck. It's a Chuck check. It's a Chuck check. It's a Charleston check, people call it. Welcome back, everybody. Email us freedom at charliekirk.com. Nathan from Georgia says, Charlie, I love the show. I yep. look to you for clarity, moral clarity, especially on political issues. I'm a little torn. Right. It seems like the Herschel Walker campaign against him is working. As a Christian, I don't know how I feel about all of it. Mm. I'll probably end up voting for Herschel Walker. Oh. Can you help me understand? Yes. Okay. That, 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 that's in the Bible. No, no, no. This is maybe the funniest Charles T. Kirk segment I've ever seen. Okay. Because he's faced with an impossible task of dealing with the fact of what is, is, is that he's got to defend this guy. Because all everybody in the Republican team has to defend this guy, Herschel Walker, who's, you know, legendary football player who was hit in the head many, many times. Herschel Walker, by the way, has one of the best quotes, which is that he said he doesn't support transgender people because how is God <laughs> because how is God gonna recognize you when you get to heaven and then you're not gonna get in? Like heaven is basically TSA. They're like, oh, it does different. But anyway, this poor guy. Herschel Walker probably doesn't know what's going on half the time, you know. He is just, um, it's one of the funniest slash stupidest political meltdowns maybe ever. You know, he, he's been saying for years and years that anybody who do, has an abortion is a murderer. There shouldn't be any exception for abortion, even if it's the life of the mother, da, 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 all this stuff. Then this lady comes forward with like every possible receipt. Of like, look, you had a boy, you paid for this abortion. You said get an abortion. And then, of course, you know, the worst part of this probably is that Herschel Walker's son, who is like a right wing MAGA influencer, even he came out, you know, this, this kid who's always in support of his dad came out. He's like, yeah, my dad's a puke. My dad's a puke and a liar. So there's no way really to deal with. It. There's no way to fix this, really. But uh, Chuck Kirk tries and he goes way, way past what he, what he needed to do. But this issue became huge yeah. and massive when his son, Christian Walker, right. who I've met, and he was always a very pleasant person to me, and he's friends with a lot of people at Turning Point USA, yep. decided to speak out against his father. Left nut. And basically, I don't want to paraphrase, can we get the exact quote? Because we, we have the clip here. Okay. So Herschel Walker's son comes out and starts attacking his father. And this I have a very big problem with. Oh, yeah. I do. Yep. 
again, Christian was always a very pleasant person when I met him. But? But I have to say I have a very, very big problem with young people attacking their parents. Right. What? I have a biblical problem with it. I have a moral problem with it. Uh -huh. I have a civilizational problem with it. <laughs> and I have a biblical problem with it. I have a moral problem with it. I have a civilizational problem with it. I have an intergalactic problem with it. I have an extracurricular problem with it. I have a charismatic problem with it. I have a delicious problem with it. So that's great. This is actually a great move by Charlie. Kids need to fall in line with their parents. <laughs> good. This is actually a good one from Charlie because I think the people who watch Charlie, like evangelicals and stuff like that, they're like, yeah, that's true. Children are property. No matter how disgusting and stupid what we're doing is, fall in line because because I did this to you. <laughs> Birth. <laughs> all those kids out there, all around the country, you know, your your mommy's drinking, you know, while driving. You know, she just she was at the bar all night, and, and you were waiting in the car, and she's like, "I gotta go to Taco Bell now." She's looking at you. You're like going 60. She's like, I got Taco Bell now. You know what I mean? Pete Davidson told me to have breakfast now. You know. What's that? I, yeah, I didn't know. I didn't understand the ad either, but we're going. You know, and, and the mom swerving around, you know. You still need to honor that parent, okay? Saying, hey, maybe do, drink some water, pull over a little bit. No, okay? You, that's your parent. You honor that parent, okay? If my father, Herschel Walker, stopped lying and making a mockery of us. Mm. You're not a family man when you left us to, and excuse the language, bang a bunch of women. Whoa! Threatened to kill us. Jesus, Charlie. Oh! Oh! No, the point that I'm going to make is I have a very, very big problem. Whoa, gee, Charlie, calm down. Jesus. I have a very, very big problem with rushing to social media and immediately attacking your parents. Wow. It's the only one of the Ten Commandments that comes with a promise. Ooh. And it is only one of the Ten Commandments that involves your nation. <laughs> wow. It's critical. It's very critical. It's, it's incredibly critical to Whoa, establish. Whoa, Charlie, Jesus. Charlie had a few drinks, okay? Don't be surprised if you see Chuck driving through that Taco Bell breakfast, okay? Right. Again, honoring parents is a conduit to honoring God. That's in the Bible! The vehicle to God is honoring <laughs> right. first your earthly parents. And again, you don't have to love them. No. But you must treat them very heavily. Exactly. You must treat it very seriously is mm. another English synonym, synonym to say this. Okay. So, yeah, I just have a really big problem with these kids, the way these kids are acting, these kids dishonoring their parents. You know, this 23-year-old uh, who told the truth about his uh, horrible father. I just have a really big problem with it. And not only that, I think he's not getting into heaven, bro. I think he's not getting into heaven, dude. Now, again, he, he totally has the right to say whatever he wants. Okay. But I think his little ass is not getting into heaven on account of this. On account of that he told the truth. It's also funny because it's like this kid kind of told the truth for once in his life. <laughs> like before this he was trying to do the MAGA influencer thing. And kind of ride on his dad's uh, coattails uh, on that. And the, and the one time that he's like, you know what, I'm just going to tell it like it is. They're like, that's easy. You're not going to heaven now, dude. I'm going to talk more about this after the break because I have a very big problem with a theme I'm starting to see. Mm. I see it on TikTok a lot. I oh, see it with yeah. this instance. I saw it with Kellyanne Conway and her daughter. Right. And I'm not saying the kids do not have legitimate complaints. Okay. Wow. That's very generous. Okay. End of sentence, right? I'm not saying that. Right. Great. But is this treating your parents heavily? Is this honoring them? Okay, I'm so, not saying you have to feel so, a certain so, way. <laughs> okay. So they're not allowed to say those things. Okay. Got it. What I'm saying is you must honor the hierarchy. Okay. Because if you don't, well, we know what happens. Oh, yeah. Every totalitarian regime undermines parental authority. <laughs> Every single one. Yeah. <laughs> and I there it is. Maybe the greatest Charlie Kirk moment of all time. Authoritarian regimes. They're terrible. Now blindly and unconditionally fall in line with the authority figure. I'm Charlie Kirk. Have a good one. Bye-bye. You know, there's something that I didn't know about Chuck. This guy, Chuck Kirk, uh, on, I don't know if this is true, but it's on his Wikipedia. In senior year of high school, Charles Kirk created a campaign to reverse the price increase for cookies at his school. <laughs> That's adorable and also kind of annoying. But God made the commandment for a reason. You know, someone asked the other day, they said, Charlie, why should I honor my mother and father? And I felt like saying, because God told you, which is true, which is my answer for it. Right. Sometimes it's helpful. I mean, you might even say, That's in the Bible! 
You know, a lot of people miss the seventh commandment. I bet you can't think of it right now, you know. But if you open your Bible and you look uh, uh, look at it, it says, it clearly states, Generally speaking, Chinese people look Chinese. Helpful to know that God told you to do something. But if, that does, if that's not persuasive for you, how no, about this? Not. One okay. day you would want to be honored too. Ooh. Oh. Maybe there's more to the story. One okay. day you would want to be honored too. Exactly, man. Such a good point. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Such a good point by Charlie. No. <laughs> I'm trying not to cry. Such a good point by Charlie here. You know, it's like, you know, when you're a kid and you have a horrible parent, you know, just a piece of garbage parent, keep your mouth shut so that one day you can be a horrible parent. And then that kid won't call your ass out on it. You know? <laughs> this is not rocket science, man. Come on. Violent crime. In high school... Chuck Kirk was known as the cookie man. You know, he would often, after school, he would go to get his books out of his backpack, and there's just, just a matted cookie just at the bottom. He's like, ooh, I forgot about that one. I, that one must have dropped below it. Yeah. Let's go. Here we go now. Who get that guitar? Patriots love him. Oh, come on. Leftist. Patriots love him. Leftists hate him. Nobody ignores him. It's the Charlie Kirk Show. That's one of the best things about the Charleston Show. They paid some, like, radio voice guy to say the stupidest stuff in between the... He's a buckle up, morons. Like, literally, he says stuff like, Buckle up. It's time for the Charlie Kirk Show. If you're not a patriot, do not apply. <laughs> Charles Chucky Kirk Show. They paid this poor guy, you know, who wanted to uh, be a movie voiceover trailer voice guy... And instead, he's Chucky Kirk. Strap your little diaper on because it's time to go to the Chucky zone. But that last one is the funniest one because it's like leftists hate him. Other people like him. But one thing you got to agree on, you can't ignore him. Um, that's kind of funny because Charlie Kirk, uh, people can definitely ignore him on YouTube. He's not doing well on YouTube. Uh, he gets less views than I do on YouTube despite having... Over 10 times as many subscribers. He's got oh, s over half a million subscribers. He's got. Can't do better than I do for views, though. That's what happens when we pay for views, Chuck. You probably saw the news yesterday. Uh, yeah, I did. Reports from the Washington Post shows that the Department of Justice says they have enough evidence to indict Hunter Biden on uh -uh. tax and gun charges. Wow. I had multiple people text me this story. In fact, I had some people message me at very high levels in media, in including some office holders saying, finally, showing off justice. And I texted back and I said, how could you be so naive? <laughs> Calm down with this little attitude, Charlie. You cookie man, you. OK, this is in the same video. And poor old Chuck Kirk, poor old Chuck Kirk in his universe. You know, there's there uh, there's certain rules, you know, that you can't break. And one of the rules is that now the FBI is bad. They hate the, they love, you know, they love law enforcement. But now they hate the FBI because the FBI was mean to Trump. Um, so the FBI is bad. But they also really like the idea of this, uh, this, this guy. Hunter Biden. They like the idea of him getting in trouble. So the FBI says, hey, he might be in trouble. They're like, like hmm. 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 I mean, I don't know why he feels the need to explain any of this stuff. He could just come out and be like, hey, you know, a trans person is trying to take your house or whatever. And he'd be fine. But he feels it necessary to uh, come out and go through all the motions on this one. And what he comes up with is pretty great. Hi. This is an attempt to try to make the FBI look cleaner ahead of the midterms. Well, oh. They leaked this. They didn't indict for a reason. Uh, uh. And I believe the indictment will come after the midterms in November and December. This is not an indictment. This is a leak. They leaked it intentionally to try to clean up the appearance of the FBI to try and stop the conservative line of attack politically against the FBI right now okay. in a consequential October. I'm not saying that Chuck doesn't know what he's talking about on this one, but I don't know what he's talking about on this. I guess, the, so So the way that he's dealing with this, we hate the FBI, but now the FBI is telling us something we like, but we still have to hate them. He's saying that this is just 
for the FBI to clean clean up its image for the midterm election. But the the only problem I'm seeing with that is they don't vote for the FBI. We don't vote on whether or not we don't vote on whether or not the FBI. We should be able to vote on the FBI, but we, but we don't. So very much like the Taco Bell commercial. I don't get it. Okay, but well, who's to say? Who's to say? No further ado. Yeah. The man, Charlie Kirk. Woo! Come on, everyone. Cookie Maine. Get his ass out here. Let's go. Perverts. So this is another thing that Chuck Kirk does all the time is he goes to these really intense, re- as you're going to see, very intense evangelical mega churches. So let's start with size. I will play the por- pro-abortion devil's advocate. Okay. But Seth, the fetus is so small and therefore small, not a lot of moral worth. So why do you want to protect something so small? Right. Yeah, well, men are generally larger than women. But that doesn't mean that men have more rights than women. It's not like Shaquille O'Neal has any more rights than Barbra Streisand, right? <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, what a good point. What a good point from this guy. I'm going to start doing this. I bet this guy makes so much money doing this. But he's like, uh, yeah, pro-choice people say, oh, it's just small. It's just nothing. You know, when women have an abortion, it's just nothing, you know? And he's like, uh, he's like, yeah, but women are smaller than men. Women are smaller than men. Barbara Streisand, she's smaller than Shaq. So, <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha on that one. And I would go out there if I were one of these guys. I would be like, you know, they say that it's small, but, you know, many of our wives, sisters, you know, actresses, mothers, you know, many of them are unrecognizable clumps of cells. Many of them, you know. my For example, my wife, she's a clump of cells, you know. I look over at her, she, she's like, she's doing this. And I go, ugh, yuck. But that's what God intended, so who are you to judge? So th- th- we're contending not against an alternative politics, brothers and yeah. sisters, but against an alternative religion, the religion of secular progressivism. Right. Oh, yeah. And it's sacrament. Whoa. Centerpiece of abortion. Oh, boy. Peter Kraft, the Catholic philosopher, once said that abortion is the demonic parody of the Eucharist. Okay. That's why it uses... The same holy words. Uh oh. Exactly. This is my body. Yeah. Uh-oh. But with the opposite blasphemous meaning. So our Savior yeah-oh. says. Oh boy, oh boy, this guy's a real piece of work. This guy's quite the character. You know, he's like, hey, I'm the, I'm the evangelical, insanely against abortion guy. That's my niche. But uh, the woo, I gotta, I gotta recover from that that quote there. He's like, uh, he was like, there was this. Catholic philosopher who was like, uh, abortion is the inverse of the, you know, the, this is the body of Christ, you know, and you, you eat it. He's like, abortion is the inverse because they use the term, this is my body. (laughs) I would say to that Catholic philosopher who came up with that, um, you got a little too much time on your hands, buddy. Okay. Let's do something else besides Catholic philosophizing for a while. Let's get outside, bro. Let's get outside a little bit, because that's that one is what we call a little bit of a stretch, my friend. Because they both use the phrase "my body," so that's what that's what that is, man. But uh, yeah, this guy's got quite an interesting job. You know, he's made a whole career out of this, where it's like uh, there's a lot of people who really want to hear this stuff, and uh, he will be there to say the. Most insane, demented version of it. I mean, these poor evangelicals, you know, they come sucking around for votes. You know, right-wingers come sucking around for votes. This guy comes sucking around for for this. Evangelicals, what is their deal, man? They've been a political force since, what, the 70s, the 80s. They love this. They can't get enough of this stuff. Why don't you find some other stuff, you guys? That's what I'll say to them. I'll go to one of their churches. They'll be like, oh... Another special guy to give a talk. I'll tell them, oh, no, I want to give a talk about how, uh, you know, about how Jesus said that businesses shouldn't have to pay taxes and you shouldn't have to uh, go by labor law and all that. And they're like, oh, perfect. And I'll go in there and be like, why do you guys like this stuff? You know, look all of them in the eye. What are you, what are you doing? Why do you like this? And make sure you're here for November. We have a very special men's conference coming up. We Ooh. really are excited about this, and they have a great promo video they're going to play Ooh, right now. Ooh, men's conference. I love men. Sweaty men. Let's see. Now. See this promo. Ooh. The 
and steel of desire is burning like a fire. Yeah. And the tribe men present their attire in the beginning of time. The 2001 baby was born to a mother and who did the E.T. finger to them. And then we got into Terrence Malick rip-off type crap. Okay, so yeah, I might actually go to this, man, this men's conference because of this promo, you know. As much as, you know, evangelicals and right-wingers and all this, they're like, we hate Hollywood. Hollywood is a bunch of demons and sin. They certainly love uh, the, all the Hollywood crap. Because this promo is a straight-up Terrence Malick rip-off. It's like, oh, oh, the baby's things, and then we move on with the sun gets into the lens, and oh, wow, the wide angle and all this crap. Uh, come on, guys, you love Hollywood. Um, so for, there really is no option for a Christian to be pro-choice or pro-abortion. Right. Uh, for one simple reason, your Savior entered human history in a uterus to redeem mankind from their sins. Boom. Jesus Christ is the greatest former fetus to have ever existed. Yep. Who actually... Jesus, Jesus the fetus. The what? But yeah, this is sort of a sad story. People forget in the Bible. This is me. I come to the thing. This is sort of a sad thing. Jesus was a fetus, okay? You know, he was a small guy, and they called him Jesus. <laughs> they called Jesus Jesus. Jesus the fetus, they called him. It was a way of bullying him. They put him in the trash can, and that's when he looked up. You know, he looked up at the cross, and he said, you know, I'm going to be better than this. And then he, that's how he got success, man. People are like, that's just not from the Bible. He's like, shut up, man. They're paying me a lot for this thing. The men's conference. There's babes there and also molten lava and people making out and getting married. Yeah! We're gonna make swords. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna go to this men's conference. It looks pretty badass from this promo, you know. You know at the end, I'm like, hey, um, I think, uh, can I get my money back? You know, because... The promo was a little misleading. You know, it said there was going to be babes and swords. And it's just a bunch of guys whining and complaining in a damn, in, in the like boring office part of a church. So money back, please. Now. Well, guys, that's a little quick Chuck check there for you guys. OK, you know, check out these new uh, Taco Bell breakfast. It's a good breakfast. OK, Pete Davidson eats it. You know, sometimes we go too far. If anybody can explain the Taco Bell commercial to me. Is it some kind of inside crap with Pete Davidson? I don't care slash no. Um, leave it in the comments. You know, you do what you do. You do what you do, you know. So I'm not even going to talk about what day it is today because I don't like to look at it and we don't like to face it, okay? We'd rather just pretend it's not true and move on, okay? Love you guys so much. Hope you have a good week. Take the towers down now. Hope you're engaging in that, pushing forward on that goal. And... I will see you later where? That's on YouTube. Bye bye. Hey guys, you're only getting a fraction of the weekly shows. If you want a new mother episode every day, subscribe on Patreon for as little as two bones. <laughs> you get the patron only Tuesday and Thursday shows. The Book of Lega show where we look at important books and the goddamn weekly behind the scenes show. And for only 25 bones, you could become a producer and get your name up here. Look at these people. These people make this show possible. If it, wa if it wasn't for them, nothing. We don't have a show. We got nothing and, it go and it's garbage. garbage. And we have to just leave. We have to just basically walk away. And we don't even really know where we're walking. That's 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 the truly troubling part about all this. But please become a patron today for as little as two bones, or if you or five bones is another level, or ten, or you go the full twenty-five and you get up here. Big special thanks to these people. Love you guys. Love you guys so much.